Good morning, everybody. I uh, want to thank everybody for joining me this Sunday morning for Sunday school. Um, this is going to be our third week back at church, but we're continuing to put our Sunday school lessons online for now. But uh, hopefully here pretty soon we'll be able to meet face to face for Sunday school again. Um, today we are going to be looking at Matthew chapter 13. And we're going to be looking at the uh, parable that Jesus gives of the sowing of different seeds. And some of you guys may be wondering, well, what is a parable? Uh, a parable is when Jesus would give an example of, some, of one thing and compare its likeness to another to help someone understand what, might not, what they might not understand. And so in this example, he, the crowd he was talking to would have been farmers. And so he was trying, well, maybe not farmers, but they grew their food. And so they would have understood a lot about what he was talking about with these seeds. And so, with that being said, hopefully you all have made it to Matthew by now. If not, that's okay. You can keep turning there. I'm kind of moving along today. Um, sorry, so we're going to read from verses 1 through 9 for now. And it reads, That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. He then told them, then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plant was scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seeds fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let him hear. And so what Jesus is doing here is he's using the example, the parable of the seeds, to try and show these um, the people who are listening to him um, examples of different growth in spirit, in spirit that you can have, so different types of spiritual growth, and how some people um, did, didn't grow at all, and they just rejected the word, and how other people, you know, did grow maybe a little bit, but then th things came up and they fell away, but um, some, most of the time when Jesus spoke in parables, the people who were listening didn't understand what he was trying to tell them, so and this is one of the instances where Jesus actually comes back later and he has to explain to them, and he does explain to them, what he is trying to tell them about. And so that's what we're going to go ahead and read about next is verses 18 through 23. We're still here in Matthew chapter 13. And it says, Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who bears the, who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seeds falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of the life of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what he has sown. So Jesus uses the example of growth in comparing it to the, his, our relationship with God. And so in verse 19, Jesus says that if the seed that if the seed is thrown on the path, or if they listen to the message of the evil one, there is no lasting spiritual growth. And that takes place because the evil one is snatching away what they would have been, what they would have gotten from the word. So it's when um, they hear it, but they don't understand what it is. And so Satan comes in and just says, ah, that's all nonsense. You don't got to listen to that. And then in verse 20, Jesus says the next seed is thrown onto the rocky ground. And in this instance, Jesus says it's like a person who hears the word of God and is excited, but since they did not root themselves in the word of God, then they fall away. And so the plant only lasts a short time and withers away in the rock with no soil to take root. 
So this, to me, seems like someone who maybe had a salvation experience and then never received proper discipleship and were just kind of left out there by their own and they never experienced any growth past that point. It was just like, all right, you're saved, now go. And when things came up, they fell away. And then then it goes on to say in uh, verse 22, it talks about seeds that were thrown among the thorns. And it says that the plants grew up, but eventually the thorns would steal nutrients away from the plants and that it's supposed to produce fruit and the plant would die. And uh, in this instance, the person left, let the difficulties of life and distractions around them to overtake the, any spiritual growth that would have taken place. And they might have grown a little bit, but uh, eventually just hardships that were going on in their life uh, eventually um, distracted them and pulled them away from what they were doing. And then in verse 23, it finally talks about a person who is spiritually growing and who's doing well. And this is the person who is um, out there and they are making more disciples and spiritually um, doing well in this time. And so um, you may be wondering, you know, well, where am I at on the spiritual growth chart? And, you know, am I on the... Am I being choked out by weeds or am I doing good? Am I producing more crops and stuff? And so um, there are a couple of ways to make sure that you are the last seed. You are the one in the good soil that is growing and producing. And ways of doing that is by checking out your own environment and making sure that it's meeting certain needs. Because like just with the seeds, they need water and sunlight and nutrients and all these different things to help them grow. And we, in our spiritual growth, also need different things to help us grow also. So one of those things is spending time with other Christians that can help you grow. And so that is, includes just um, in general hanging out with everybody and being around people who are like-minded and like thinking. And then um, also being discipled, whether that be by someone who is older than you, the same age, just someone who is more knowledgeable in the Word and is helping you to grow in that way. Um, spending time at church and things, the different things that we uh, listen to and watch and um, that we participate in, you know, making sure that all those things are godly and things that God would want us to do. And this is different. These are just a couple of different ways that we can grow in our spirituality and our relationship with Christ. And so in kind of wrapping up, um, we have recently started growing a or we're going to start growing some crops and different vegetables and stuff at our house. And so we have um, important things that we need to do to make sure that the plants are taken care of and have their proper nutrients and sunlight and water. And so just like what we're going to have to do with those plants, you guys are going to have to do with yourself and making sure that you're getting the proper spiritual nutrients. And so that's going to be through reading your word and prayer and attending church and spending time with God in different ways like that. And so if any of you guys have any questions or want to ask me about different ways or maybe you want to be discipled and you're interested in that, then I would encourage you to text me or Pastor Allen or someone so that we can get you um, set up with somebody so we, you can start discipling and then maybe eventually, or being discipled, and then maybe eventually you could actually be the one discipling someone new. And so that's all I have for you guys this week. I look forward to seeing you all on Sunday and I will see you next week.